Das war auch Aber ich will Muhammad 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the remembrance of Allah is the most glorious of all things, the best of all narrations is Quran, the remembrance of Allah is the most glorious of all things, <coughs> the best acts are those requiring the highest degree of will and determination, worst acts are those based on innovation, the best way of life is the one adopted by the prophets of Allah. The most glorious death is the death of the martyr. The most wretched blindness consists of going astray after finding the right way. Best acts are ones that yield benefits. Best guidance is that which people may be able to follow. The worst blindness is the blindness of the heart. Amma bad, yakulu Allahu ta'ala fil Qur'an al-Kareem. Inna allaha wa malaykatuhu yusalun ala nabi ya ayyuha alladheena amanu salu alayhi wa salimu tasliman. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina mulana muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa salam. The name of Allah most gracious, most merciful, ta'asin me. These are the verses of the book that makes things clear. We rehearse uh, to thee some of the story of Moses and Pharaoh and truth for people who believe. Truly Pharaoh elated himself in the land and broke up its people into sections, depressing a small group among them, their sons he slew, but he kept alive their females for he was indeed a mischief maker. And we wish to be gracious to those who were being depressed in the land, of those who are being uh, depressed in the land and make them heirs and make them, uh, yes, to make them leaders in faith and make them heirs, to establish a firm place for them in the land uh, to show Pharaoh, Haman, and their host at their hands the very things against which they were taking precautions. All of this is very important, but we've been on this surah for a while and we'll probably be on it for quite some time. It's like some of the other surahs, you know, uh, where uh, it is stated that uh, there's great plans and schemes made against the believers and those plans are so great and so well put together, so thought out uh, that if the hills had consciousness, uh, it would shake the very hills. And actually in the Arabic it means that they would disappear. Uh, so basically it means that the plans against Islam are so stupendous so long in planning, so executed over so many decades and centuries, that if the hills had consciousness of those plans, then it would cause them to tremble and shake. And at the root of it, it means that if they were executed properly, without the help of Allah, Islam would disappear. But of course, we know that that ain't possible because of Allah's statements. But this Quran is such a, a, a eloquent uh, expression of reality. Itab al-Mubin, al burhan uh, all kind of names that, that, that makes it a clear, pure explanation of things that have happened, things that are happening now, and of things to come. So we have confidence uh, in the book. 
And we know that this is a reality because of all the schemes that the great leaders or big leaders in the past have had all follow a, simple, a similar pattern. And in this case, it's Pharaoh, right? Separating the people in different crews. That's what they do now. They always do that. If the people are united, you know the first thing we learned in colonialism <clears throat> that uh, when we was in Africa is that the colonial powers, when they came in, they always gave the minority tribe power and authority. Why? Because in the heyday of the, the rulers, the majority tribe was ruling. And the minority tribe was generally subservient to them. But they knew all their customs, they knew everything that was happening. So if they gave power to the king, the original king, or the big uh, the tribe, the main authority, then they could unite to fight against the colonial powers. But if they gave power to the weak tribe, right, it could only serve the master because it could never, and it would never, right, unify the majority tribe to fight against the oppressor that's given them power. So therefore, these schemes and plans have been in existence since the beginning of time. Since, there, since the human being has evolved with the ability of having uh, stationary groups, tribes, and what have you, and great cities, this is something that's been going on. But in this case, that Allah wants to be good to these people who are the Mustafa theme built, uh, fill art. They have been oppressed in the land. They have been depressed and repressed over and over again. And Allah wants to give them aima. That's leadership. Allah wants to give them, that's what it says now, of course it says Allah wants to. Allah don't need to want Allah. It's just uh, uh, the way the vocabulary is uh, because Allah's will is supreme and it's always been here. You and I go by at different times. It's getting spring now, the trees are getting ready to sprout and everything. And it's nice. The weather is changing. For you and I, this is, oh man, rejuvenation. For Allah, there is no past, present, or future. It is. Even in the Bible, when uh, Moses went up on the mountain and he came and he said, take off your shoes, you're on sacred ground. Then a lot likes to push up and he do a lot of stuff for him. He's amazing. He said, who should I tell him that sent me? This is biblical, of course. He said, tell him I am who I am. Now, <laughs> that's as good as it's going to get. Uh, tell him it's Allah, he is who he is. Okay, now for us, we've been a little depressed and repressed, and we go over that history every week, right? Whatever party, whatever group we had, the old Euro has been really landed on the brothers pretty thick ever since we've been here, and he's been doing it to somebody all the time. So, Allah wants to be gracious. To us, this is what we read in the Quran. Allah wants to be good to us, so uh, wants to give us aim. And the very things that they have been doing to stop the movement, to stop the progress, to inhibit the growth and the development of Islamic peoples, and to suppress good. That's the very thing that's going to hit them, is what the Quran said, that they was making and taking all their precautions against. This is the exact same thing that's going to hit them, that's going to bust them up. Now, we've probably heard the story before of what's called belling the cat. Belling the cat. Well, 
you know, there's a story about the, the poor animals was all getting eat up and treated pretty bad by a cat, mountain lion, or what like that. You know, so a lion, basically. So all the animals got together and say, what we going to do about this joker? Boy, he is really wreaking havoc amongst us. He just overruling us, taking advantage of us. He's treating us pretty bad. So they thought and they thought and they came up with a solution. How about if we put a bell around the cat, right? You know, remember like the cow bell? I don't know if y'all was in the country, but all your cows had a, a cow bell a day. Why? Because the cows was always walking off and you'd lose them. So we used to put cow bells around the cow so we wouldn't lose our cow. That's where you got your milk. Now you drink milk out of a carton. In those days, you got it, squeezed it out of the cow in a bucket and went home and then you churned it. Y'all don't remember churning, do you? <laughs> Guess what you got out of churning? Butter. Real live butter. Not that stuff that they got around here. It's similar to that, but it's real butter. And the milk that you have left has something on the top of it. What is that? Cream. You can put your hand on the cream. Even when you had milkmen here, y'all, some of y'all remember milkmen in the morning. When you pluck that boy or right on the top was cream, right? Okay, that was a time that uh, has long passed. But anyway, here's the poor animals. They want to uh, bell the cat, as they call it. So it was a good idea to bell the cat. Like we were saying, we bell the cow. Then they said, okay, now, Who's going to put the bell on the cat? This is the only problem. They, it's a beautiful idea, but which one of the animals is going to be tough enough, crazy enough, to go up to the cat and drop the bell on his head, around his head, around his neck? Right? This is the problem with Islam in America. You don't think everybody knows what the problem is, right? All of us know that they're getting whooped upside. Now, everybody know they're being lied on, being deceived, and all of that. You know what I mean? This is not a problem. But who's going to deal with it? This is the, the real problem. So I remember years ago, we had a program this was back in the late 90s. Uh, protest to protect. It says, O oh Allah, free my father. This may become a familiar scene amongst Muslim families unless we take action. Then it has, of course, my Shadow Islam, Effective Death Penalty Act, the Counterterrorism Bill of 1996 allows for harass and detain Muslims without due process of law, imprison and detain Muslims based on secret evidence, tap phone lines violating private rights, detain Muslims on the basis of guilt by association, eliminate rights of Muslims to give any form of aid to what they would call terrorist countries even if it's in the form of food. In other words, they're getting it down so that you can't even send food like, or money. A lot of the Muslims here are from Pakistan. They have big eggs. They make, I don't know how much money they collect. Technically, they don't need it. They're middle and upper class. They can't send the money to Pakistan unless they real, real slick about it. And they definitely not coming over here to give it to me and you just because we need it. That's not a criteria. But anyway, so we told everybody, this is a boy, a man here, this is his father, they make a do-up. And we had three programs, San Francisco, D.C., and Westwood, and that, in other words, L.A. Wasn't nobody listening. They wasn't paying no attention. This was a nice program here. Yeah, this was 
down in Irvine. Look at the date. September the 9th, 2001. Ruin Event Center, UC Irvine. This was the Imam Jamil. Imam Jamil had been in the penitentiary a little over a year at that time. Maybe about a year and a few months. It was March 16th, 2000 is when he got uh, locked up. So uh, actually, this was our biggest fundraiser. We raised over $100,000 with this program. Look who's going to be there. Anwar Alaki, Muslim El Siddiqui, da -da -da -da, Hamza Youssef, all of Oh, it was all the big timers was there. That was two days before September 11th. Good thing we had it on September the 9th. Hamza Yusuf coming in, y'all probably seen him. He was talking gangster talk. America, you going to pay for your crimes. The crime what you did to black people. The crime you did to everybody. The Indians. Oh, he was right. He was exactly right. Two days later, 9-11 jumped off. Three days after that, the FBI was in his house. This is what the newspaper said. Did you say America was going to pay for our crime, his crime? No, that I got taken out of context and I spoke out of turn. I didn't mean that, it's just like Alan Moody. Some of the other Negroes down there, when we was having a big demonstration, and we get up and talk plenty of trash, they get up behind us. Yes, you love Hamas? I love Hamas. Next to the feds, is, did you say you like Hamas? No, what it really is is this. So here's how for you said. I spoke out of turn. I got caught up in the spirit of the moment. In other words, we're going to come up last, and we're going to be talking gangster talk, and if he get up there talking sweetie pie talk, well, he's going to look a little funny. The next time the feds <laughs> come to his house, his wife told him, we want to talk to your husband, Hamza Yusuf. He says he is with the president. So stop acting a fool. What are you talking about? I think she turned on the TV, C-SPAN or something, and that is Sheikh Hansen. He didn't kind of drop the Hamza Yusuf for a while, and he's back to Hansen, his uh, Scandinavian name. I think he's, his parents from Denmark or somewhere up there. Uh, and lo and behold, there he is right downtown. And who's speaking? Old George is talking before Congress. Why are we going to track them the people down, the terrorists down, and we're going to do this and do that? And he's at clapping like a big dog. Look at old Hansen. This thing about Bell the Cat is real. Everybody knows who the monster is, but who's going to go up to him and stick a tag on him, a sign on him? a noisemaker, a clapper, or anything, so everybody will see him when he comes, or hear him, isn't that right? Well, guess what? That's been our job all along. That's our job. That's not a bad job. Just because don't nobody want it don't mean it's a bad job. We like that job. We've never changed our story on anything. In fact, we've gotten uh, what they might call worse in, in, in during the period. Now, we have other Negroes, though, who will come and undermine everything that you do. For them, here's one long series of programs, drugs and their effects uh, on the individual, on the family and friends, on the community. Drugs is a means of exploitation and control of the black community. Who's the real victim? You know, on and on. What can we do about this? Shoot, two months, two uh, This is 86. Guess what? By 89, you got 
people up in New York jumping up and down. So-called Palestinian, they go to help the big thing take off. And pretty soon, they're having drug marches. But who they marching with? They ain't marching against the police to sell them drugs. They marching with the police. And all the, the papers are calling them drug busters. Right? Why? Because they will co-opt any program that you got. Oh, that ain't nothing. We talking about Malcolm. We love Malcolm. We we taking off from where Malcolm left. The next thing they have a dog on fly, and the fly is a Kenty Call fly. Y'all remember that Kenty Call cloth fly? And then they talk about, well, we love Malcolm. You never heard nothing from it after that. Just like the dope busters and all that, it was never, it had, it had no effect on nothing. Of course, you talking, you marching with the people just selling the dope. Right? All of that is to fix up somebody that they want to popularize to go against you or your program. We have that in Oakland. We have a couple of new centers in Oakland. Where did all the people go in our masjid? They went to that masjid and uh, they over there. Who's there? Uh, Mellow Yellow's over there. Now y'all know who Mellow Yellow is. Mellow Yellow went to American University over here. That's like going to the police station. <laughs> you know American University. I don't care whether it's Cairo, whether it's Lebanon. When stuff started jumping off of Lebanon, they kidnapped almost everybody that was going to the American University because they know they was all police. Why before that, during Ottoman times, it was the Christian, excuse me, university. And they were there to subvert. And we have a few more people who have went to American University of Cairo. And what do they do? We had a meeting right here from uh, Manor. And first thing happened is the toilets went crazy. They ain't went crazy since then. We had doo-doo back and I'm doing all of that. Then we down there right there, downstairs. And after the program was over, we push, push. Guess what pops up? One of them seven up bottles. It's just the right size. It goes down and uh, you put pressure on one end and it goes right back through the pipe. It pops up down to the pipe in the kitchen. That's okay. <clears throat> but the people don't want you to say nothing in a program that you're having right there. And, and Dear Hamza, oh, when he was at the first MANA program, MANA, Muslim Alliance of North America, is an organization of Negroes, basically, of, of Americans. It's supposed to develop a program that's not an immigrant program, but deal with the issues here in America. Of course, you ain't never heard him say nothing about that. The only thing I'm saying is, when you decide to bell the cat, everybody else, if you try to climb up the pole, they're going to put grease on the pole. If you try to get there on the highway, they're going to flood the highway. This is normal. Why? Because people that don't have enough courage and don't have enough backbone and they're taking money from Saudi Arabia and all of these people, they don't want to see you successful. Because if you are or well, your program is successful, it shows them up. So although belling the cat will save everybody's life, the people that get their breakfast cereal and all that from the enemy, they don't want you in their heart to be successful for many reasons. So you're not up against just the system. You're against the offshoots of the system. Like I say, right there in Oakland now, everybody goes over to another masjid. Just like these masjid, this masjid used to be full. They will build another one right around the corner. And everybody that you miss it will be there. Why? Because that's where they're told to go. And 
the masjid in Oakland. Ours is Masjid Al Islam. If you was up in Connecticut, you know what the name of their masjid was in Connecticut? Masjid Al Islam. Oh, my goodness, things get really sticky around here. So now, one time I'm giving a cookbook and uh, the people are trying to undermine stuff. So big old bubble-eyed brother that's always around, slipping around, you know, everywhere. Imam Musa, you said Imam so and so was your friend, but you talking about him in the cookbook. <coughs> so I said, don't run off. Stay right there a minute. I said the only reason. I talk about these clowns is they have a front man in Philadelphia. We know who the front man is in Philadelphia. The front man in Philadelphia is constantly coming by our master. This is 93. And saying, please come up, Imam Mellow Yellow is going to be speaking in Pennsylvania. And one of our brothers is a game warden, dressing soon and everything, in Pennsylvania. And he got, he got a big camp up there. So I told him, absolutely not. I know how to go to the penitentiary. I'm not going to know what they gonna call terrorist training camp. <laughs> Lo and behold, I'm sitting in Philadelphia looking at the news. I see a brother in the Sunna, and I see all kind of agents around, they said, this man here had, was running a terrorist training camp. And here is <coughs> Mella Yellow's homeboy trying to get me to go up to the penitentiary. Well, I know I go to Lewisburg, I go to all the penitentiary, I know where they are. If I need a case, I can get a case, I can get a case just like that. You talk about it, I said, well, the only thing is, I said, the next thing is, those Negroes, the one inviting, we let them use the masjid in, in uh, Philadelphia. So uh, one Sunday, I said, I got a feeling. Let me zip on up there. So I zipped on up there all of a sudden. And uh, I come up to the, what, well, the window's right on the street, so I walk by got a green carpet just like this, is Negroes in prone position with AK-47s and everything, practicing weapon training in the masjid. I said, hold that close up. I said, wrap it up and get on out of here. Don't come back with that no more. Well, what's wrong with that? I said, uh, what do you mean, what's wrong with that? I said, the heat that we got, you gonna come here, and this is a white folks neighborhood mixed black and white, but there's plenty of white folks. What do you think niggas look like carrying violin cases with rifles <laughs> in and out of our masjid? Right? And all these white folks, you know, one neighbor's black, the next was white, or across the street, one's black. So what do you think? I said, the heat we, well, who are you? I said, well, it's good to be underestimated. I said, so y'all get your, if you want to go weapon training, they got woods all over here in Pennsylvania. You just drive up the highway a little while, and they got mountains, hills, school, rivers, everything. You want to train in. That's what we've been dealing with all along, every day. People trying to arrange for us a place either in the cemetery or the penitentiary. Now, we don't mind going to jail, but not for no foolishness. So anyway, I'm going to speed up. We have always been dealing with uh, these type of subjects. This is February 28th. This is Oakland Auditorium. This is the first time. This is actually 82. Imam Jamil, the last poets is going to be there. In 82, there's still some remnants of black consciousness. You know. The big black movement has only been knocked out by then about seven, eight years. It's still, everybody's still black conscious, so Imam Jamil's going to be there. And uh, the last poets, y'all remember the last poets, right? They was throwing down. 
We had to program at the Oakland Auditorium and fill the place up. <clears throat> what made it unique was we were Sunni Muslims. In the West Coast, they had never seen a hardly Sunni Muslims. So we had everybody came, even the chief came. The chief was standing in Oakland for a while. The chief came and everybody was standing all back. Can the chief pray with us? I said, of course the chief can pray with you. And uh, they had, we had a lot of uh, immigrant friends, Arabs, Iranians, and upstairs, all the sisters, and they was looking up there. They said, those people is white. I said, well, they kind of Iranians. Iranians technically. Indo-European, not full-fledged European, Indo-European, that's what they say in the dictionary. But anyway, this was a big deal. So we started off from the very beginning trying to deal with Islam the way it should be. Misleading of American Muslims, this one was kind of funny because here we have uh, this is a program, this must be 85. Misleading of American Muslims. Muslims in blackface. The Christianization of American Muslims. What does Muslims in blackface mean? You remember they used to have uh, white folks back in the old days would have blackface on with big white lips, out Joseph and the people. And they would be singing, you know, they would basically be making fun of Negroes. So it would be white folks in blackface, you know, trying to sing like black people or a minstrel show, whatever. Uh, Muslims in blackface means, I should have actually put white face on it, but I put blackface on it. That means Muslims call themselves Muslims, they dress like white folks, they have bow ties and ties. And all their whole structure is 100% white, but they're talking black. So that means that Muslims in blackface mean they got big white lips and they're talking black talk. Christianization of American Muslims, you can imagine who that was. That's our dear friend who, uh, anything you did revolutionary, this is during the days of uh, Lebanon and all that, he'd give it on the newspaper. Anybody that go, don't go to a, a Lebanon and fight for America, America is not Babylon, America is Nineveh. You know, Nineveh, they have a long story there. True Islam, the struggle continues. That means, what does this say here? Neglected, oppressed, that is Islam, the hope, Islam, the solution, Islam, the success. That means that uh, we use an ayat and relate to uh, true Islam. The struggle continues, not blackface Islam. You see, that's what our struggle was in California. I said all this to say uh, we got tons of <coughs> program. All of this stuff went on decades or a long time before any of these modern people ever showed up to our masjid. When they came, they came to do a job. They came to subvert. They came to try to break the back of the Islamic movement because Oakland at that time is taking, is moving. On the West Coast, that means from Seattle all the way down to LA, it's only one or two uh, Masajid based on the Sunnah except immigrant centers. There's one pretty good size one in LA, but they kind of semi salafi like. They ain't, man, they, they, had, they had a pretty bad program down there. So technically, we're the only ones on the West Coast that's independent, right? This, that uh, is trying to uh, give a balanced picture of what Islam is. That is the same job that we're doing today. We're saying all of that to say this. Dear believers, everything that you hear coming out of California or coming from around here is a repeat of decade after decade of the same old story. 
But uh, I'm not even going to go into the people, but all the people that are out there in California, right there in Oakland now, that was a part of our community, when they joined up, the government gave them a staff and they gave them everything that they need. You go to any massage that pop up around here, you go there, they got a staff. And they got a whole system designed to help them improve. And then they have an opposite system to try to break the back of whatever you're doing. What we're trying to say is we've been dealing with this for over 35 years. It's common to us. And why do we say that? We say that because when Allah says that Allah wanted to be good to a people, he wanted to be gracious to a people. Why? Because they've been oppressed and depressed. And for their work, for the cause, Allah wants to give them aim, that is leadership, right? And he wants them to become warathin, that means that they are they inherit the true uh, reality of Islam. They don't try to politicize it to fit their bill. They look at the world the way it is and they make their decisions based on what Allah says in the Quran. So Allah wanted to be good to them. Whether it's the people up in New York, whether it's the people around here, wherever it is, you look, we have been continuing the work that we believe Allah wanted us to do. And this is uh, based on certain things. And Allah, when you're a small band, Allah will give you many things. We talked about it the other week. One of them is leverage. Remember we talked about leverage, that if you can get enough leverage, you can move anything, right? You can put one ton, over 2,000 pounds, right on this side of something, attach it to a long pole, and if you get enough leverage, you or I can move that object, although it weighs a ton. Why? Because of leverage. When you have the whole Islamic movement, have been taken over. We've read about COINTEL program and all that, right? We know, we know, you and I know that the movement, if you take the black movement, who are the leaders of the black movement? Are they speaking for black people? Is Connell West, Al Sharpton, the National Negro, are they speaking for the needs of the people? Absolutely not. Why? Because the leadership is in the hands of those people who have been put in place 30, 40, even 50 years ago. They've been put in place. Why? Because we know from our own history that the system have always martyred and killed and jailed our brothers and sisters. And they keep them that way until they try to break them or run them crazy or any other affair. So Allah will give you leverage against the system. You, your numbers may be small, but that other thing we call is positioning that Allah will place you in a position, right? Well, you know, in the Quran it says that Allah watches them from positions that they are not aware of. And that Allah will help you from ways and avenues, methods, and processes which you hadn't even thought of yourself. <coughs> That's why when you give somebody and you help somebody, don't expect your reward to come from that person. It may come from way over here. You may not even realize that blessing you got over here came from giving to somebody over there. And if you're wasting time waiting for that person, the person that you help might be talking to Brother Abdullah, that fool, when I needed $2,000, that so-and-so is so dumb, 
He came and gave me $2,200. You talk about a fool, right? It's brother so-and-so, right? Not the one you help, right? That's possible that that might happen. It, it's even common, isn't it? <laughs> Tell the truth, it's common. The people you try to help the most is the same one start sticking you in the back and cutting you in the throat. This is common. So you don't wait for the reward from them, nor do you stop giving and helping because they didn't reward you. Allah is going to reward you, right? And Allah, this is, we don't believe this true, we know it's true. Because the schemes have been so long and so deep, uh, half of you didn't see it here, or didn't see a portion of it. If you've seen 2% of what happens here, you've seen 200% uh, more than anybody else has seen. Because it's daily, it's regular, and it's continuous. What we're talking about today is maturing in the Islamic movement. The other thing is staying focused on what you're working, working on. Never allowing people, right, to divert your attention. That's what Oakland was all about for the last three years, divert attention. That's what the attack on the masjid, the uh, attack, attack after another. All of it done that the police is standing there half the time, you know what I mean? To let you know and to let everybody know, we are all in this together. And the people that they got doing it is doing things so obvious it's ridiculous. I told y'all about the, the Negro was, uh, <coughs> two of the Negroes was, well, Imam Musa, you ain't no tough guy, you a government agent. And to prove it, look at your car. At the bank. You almost, I got the thing on the tape and video. You know, on the phone. See them license plate? Taxation without representation. That's a special license for agents in, in D.C. <laughs> it says, is that right? And look at that sticker in the window. That sticker allow you know, like some bases you can get on. That sticker, you know, the one we have in the left front one, <laughs> driver's side, the Negro said, the license plate, look at them, they're the color, government color. And that sticker in the window, it was last year, 2015, that sticker is proof that you are United States government agents with security clearance and you can get on any CIA base in the world. I said, just a minute. I said, would you repeat that again? So I had to make sure I got it. I said, that license plate. And I repeated the number on my van. And it means that taxation without representation means that I got special hookup with the government. That's right. Two of them. Yes, that's right. We knew you had it. government. You ain't tough. You just scared. And you work with the government and they let you play like you, you playing like you tough. And they boosting you up and they helping you. They ain't whooping you upside the head. They're not on your head, not real. <laughs> and stealing your money and all of that, that ain't real. You a government agent, I said, and the proof is, what not, say that again. <laughs> that license plate, taxation without representation. Yes. And you got the clearing. You can't get that nowhere. I said, the, the thing, the sticker, that's 2015, November 2015. That sticker means that I'm a federal agent? Yes, it do. And I, I said, thank y'all very much. Could you get mad at a nigga that stupid? <laughs> I, I could, how are you going to get mad? I, I said, I don't believe you saying that, but I just, let me get it on tape and let me, uh, excuse me, let me go back again. You know you got your phone. I said, would you point to the license plate, that is the one you're talking about? And would you point to the sticker? I said, thank you very much. What you going to do with that? I said, when I tell the people in D.C., they ain't going to believe what you said. They're not going to believe that you are not even stupid, nigga. You got to work and study 
for 30 years to become stupid. You got to improve a whole lot to get stupid. You're not, in other words, <laughs> could you get mad at these times? And they do that all the time. <laughs> so Allah will give you, you know, we said, uh, uh, we're going to use kindness, optimism, and humor. That's from Allah. Allah know we like humor. We used to like Amos and Andy and all that when we was kids. Y'all don't remember Amos and Andy, do you? Well, Kingfish was a fool, and it was hilarious. Not really, but it was hilarious to us. We just laughed. Uh, I, got, I bought some, uh, no, my friend gave me the whole series of Amos and Andy a couple of years ago. Soon as a silhouette, supposed to be of New York, came on, uh, I started laughing. And I hadn't seen them in 50 years or something like that. 60 years ago they was out. Anyway, these Negroes is like that. They act so stupid as humorous. That's a help. If you like humor, Allah give you what you need. Other people, we, my friends, they won't, well, we're going to do them things. We're gonna, I said, no, you can't do that. We're not do that. I'm telling you, my family right now will not come around because we on a non-violent I ain't putting up with them niggas. I'm not going, if they open their mouth, you know how y'all are, they are. They're. You know what I mean? They're not going to have people insult them and this peace and love. They don't know the game. If we fought and raised Cain, right, we'd be falling into their trap, right? They falling into our trap. Everything that happened out that way has been for the blessing of the Islamic movement. So when it says that Allah want to be gracious to you, right, uh, and give you leadership, I'm not talking about an arrogant type of leadership. I'm talking about, and I moved to water early clothes this week. See, I'm gonna try to do the best I can. Y'all make do it for me. You know, once you start talking, you know, it, it, it's, it's like the devil get in you and he just keep you rolling. People's eyes be, please stop, still be rolling. <laughs> please let us go, we want to leave. I'm going to stop the day early, don't y'all worry. At the five minutes, it's all over. Maybe six, but no longer. <laughs> I'm telling you, because I know how it is, but see, we be wanting to get the message out, the stuff, see it's stuff going on. If you go on a week, it's this it's seven days of fitness with us. You see what I mean? For you, you go on about your business, but I got a whole seven days. Somebody can call. Yeah, nigga. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> or somebody will tell your family something stupid. Or anything. Every day, all the day, all the time. So when I get here on Friday, I be wanting to unload the whole thing. That's why it gets an hour, an hour and a half. Some of the foreigners come in and they just pass out. You know, they back to the 20-minute cookbooks. <laughs> and in Negro, we you kind of used to uh, an hour, but not no four or five hours. I want to stop here and I want to mention. In 78, <laughs> in L.A., <coughs> The masjid on Central Avenue, the chief came on. He thought, talked through Zor, through Asr, and through Maghrib in the summertime. <laughs> chief was rolling. In about four or five hours, he was still rolling. That was in the days of the flying cockatrice, E-I-E-I-O, <laughs> and all that stuff. Y'all don't remember that. Boy, the chief, the chief was. We liked the chief. He was a good man. Boy, but he could. Anyway, dear believers, uh, keep that attitude because if you lose your ability to laugh at yourself and to laugh at the surroundings, you will become normal. And if you become normal in this Islamic struggle, the, the, the system is going to study you and find out what they can do to you, and they're going to do that. And it may be simple, and I'll definitely close with this. One of our friends, 
whom you all know, a very, very good brother, our most learned. And, uh, but the only thing about him, you know, he's not the joking kind. Like, you know, if you shoot at him, I tell you, he'd be wanting to shoot at your back, stuff like that. I mean, right away, he ain't going to give fair fact if he catch you thinking about it. But that's the way he is. And when you do something to him, it ain't funny, you know what I mean? And, and I was telling, this is one of my best friends, but we argued all the time. You know, not about who the enemy is, but how to deal with him. I said, you can't do that, man. If they do this to me, I said, they're going to do that to you. Just by you saying it to me, I don't know, I ain't got no bug on me, but they got something that can hear somewhere. If you say, I ain't going to put up with this and I ain't going to put up with that, that's what they're going to do the very next day. Right? That's the way they do. They got, they got everybody listening and studying and talking to you. What you like, hey, ma'am? You don't know. Oh, what you do you like? Oh, oh. And they, they're studying you. And they found out that he wasn't going to put up with nothing. Now, I know they lied on him. I know our brothers do not shoot police and stuff like that. That is a <coughs> flat out lie. You know, but you have to keep an attitude, a long range attitude. You can manipulate the environment toward Islam if you're patient, if you stay focused, and if you trust in Allah. And this is the last thing. No more than two minutes. That tafweed, tafweed and riba, we talk about tafweed is delegating. Delegating your affairs to Allah. It's like to walk. You look at it and you got enough sense to know Allah, uh, I can't even hold all that in the front of my mind. Uh, I'm turning that over to you. That's what you said through in the book. I'm turning that over to you. And you do it. You still plan and you make, you know, your little stuff. But how did Pharaoh get hooked up and whooped up by the things that he was taking precautions against? Because Allah was the delegator of the affairs of Moses. And he changed all of that. And when Pharaoh looked up, he was going around in a circle, like getting ready to go around the drain. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the Quran say he was going around. That boy got caught up in a drain out there. He was going around and around and getting ready to go poop. And then they come to him, but it's a little too late. You know the way the hadith is on death. The, uh, shahada, if you take it before the death rattle, whatever that is, that means you, you are certain you're getting ready to die. That's what we interpret. So Pharaoh said, well, it's all over now for sure. I'm a believer, a little too late. You can't slide in the home plate. Maybe if you was a couple of minutes ahead of the time, you'd have been all right. You see, what we're saying is this. When you delegate your affairs to Allah, that's tough weed. And then riba is being pleased with what Allah gives you. Being pleased with what Allah gives you. It works like a charm. But we have to do it. We are facing the biggest threat in the history of modern Islam. It's global and everybody is in it against us. All the Western powers, half of our dictators, whether it's Egypt, whether it's Saudi, look at Saudi Arabia today, bombing the poorest, the richest bombing the poorest, right? Look at our leaders. I don't care whether it's Pakistan, Bangladesh, wherever you go, right? Them bums is lying and stealing and, uh, you know, just running the people crazy. Pakistan, Zinzabad. Long live Pakistan. That's that line, Nawaz Sharif. Every time you get him over here, he's trying to get him some. Yes, I'll take it. How much y'all going to give me for that? I'm going to sell the Pakistani people, at least give me a couple of billion. No, we're going to give you but $5 million for all them people. 
Well, Sam, I'll take it. Hell, I ain't worth that much. Or allow, we seek that refuge from anxiety and grief. We seek that refuge.